Hello everyone, this is Jozef Mach here and welcome back to the third part of this tutorial where I'm talking about multiphase modeling. No, I did not have lunch yet because we are making chicken parmesan and that takes a while but it's going to be very good. I'm looking forward to it but we're not here to talk about food. There are special YouTube channels for that. Check out, for example, Sorted Food. We are talking about OpenFOAM simulations. And what we did in the last tutorial, we created a mesh, a very coarse mesh, as you see here. But let's start with a coarse mesh and then let's progress towards a finer mesh. What do we do now? So we created a mesh, now we are good with that. We will now change the directory and go into case. What do we have in case? As you see, we have a couple of entries here. And now this is what you would expect from an open form case directory, zero constant in system. And I personally extended, extended it to the case, the mesh and the geometry folder because I found it to be very handy feel free to just use one case directory and then create your mesh there and then store your geometry files. I find this to be more organized. Okay, now here you see the script as a setup case and what do we find there in setup case? This is also a very simple bash script which opens up all the required files that you need for case setup. And if you are doing this simulation in Ubuntu, you can just use this setup so you don't have to modify it. If you try to, um, to uh, do the simulation in Windows 10, then we'll have to change gedit to the path where the executable is. So in my case, this was gedit and then bin and then gedit x. Let's save it and now if I, so we are good here, now I will save this and then execute sh setup case and, and this opens up now the case files and again the same philosophy here, we go from left to right, go through all the dictionaries and from top to bottom. We start with the initial values and the boundary conditions. This is what you would find in zero. Feel free to open them up manually in nano, in VI, wherever you want. This is just a suggestion with gedit and also you can use a different text editor, Emacs or Notepad++ as you want. This is completely up to you. This is just a suggestion here. So what's alpha.water? This is now, if I go back to this presentation, this is this field, the volume of fluid field, alpha which then uh, ever uh, creates this averaged um, density. So alpha is one if we have the liquid and if alpha is zero, then we have gas. Initially, we set this to be zero, so we assume gas everywhere. We will change that a little bit later in set field stick, but for now, we leave it at zero. <clears throat> and then at the inlet, we fix the value of alpha to be one, so we want to inject only water. And at the outlet, we use an inlet outlet boundary condition, so if our velocity points outwards, this is a simple zero gradient boundary condition. And for whatever reason, the velocity points inwards into our geometry, then we fix the value to be zero. So if we if a liquid leaves or domain through the outlet, then it lands in Nirvana. We don't want water to come back out of Nirvana into our tank. This is the, the boundary condition here. And along the wall, we use zero gradient boundary condition. For the pressure, then in the pressure, we use a pressure of zero, 
we could set this to one bar, of course, but since we have a incompressible a solver, we can define this to be the relative pressure instead of the absolute pressure. So feel free to enter here 10 to the power of minus oh, plus five, so one bar. And at the inlet, we use the fixed flux pressure boundary condition. And this boundary condition sets the pressure gradient to a provided value such that the flux of the boundary is specified by the velocity. So if you specif specify the velocity at the inlet, then it is a good idea to use this. You can also use um, zero gradient if you want. And we use also the same on the walls, on the pipe and tank, because we will fix the velocity to zero along the walls. Now at the outlet we use a fi we fix the pressure, we could use fixed value, uniform zero, but here we use the total pressure, which also includes velocity effects. And we define the P0 value to be zero. Now for the velocity, as you see at the inlet, we fix the velocity to be 3.5 in the positive z direction and this is very important this is something that newcomers usually uh, if there is an error message or the simulation results doesn't look like you would expect this is uh, why a lot of times why here we enter plus 3.5 so we uh, define it in the plus z direction upwards but if we, in your case for your simulation project for whatever reason the inlet is pointing in the negative z direction then take care of that this then you have to put here a minus otherwise you will suck out the fluid out of your domain so at the outlet we use the pressure inlet outlet velocity which you usually use if you specify the pressure. You could also use here in that outlet. And the new boundary condition, which was introduced in 4.1 or 4.0, no slip, which is nothing else than fixed value 000. So you can just now type in no slip instead of fixed value and uni value uniform 000, which is very handy, I think. Okay, so these are the initial conditions and the boundary conditions. Then in constant we find a couple of entries we don't have a mesh yet we will copy it at the later stage so with g we define the gravitation and it is this is now in the negative z direction we are injecting in the positive and we want the gravitation to pull it down into the tank then at this point we don't use dynamic mesh, this is going to be the third simulation, we use a static mesh. So this is the entry that we will use for now. We assume the flow to be laminar and then transfer properties. And this is important. And especially the first entry here, the phases. Here we defined what the phases are. This uh, We want them to be water and air. And this is something hard coded. And this uh, you can find here in this comment. The first entry, water, defines the name of the file alpha.water. So if, for example, for your case, you are taking a look at oil then, and you want to call that phase oil, then you enter here oil, but then you have to change the name of alpha, alpha.water to alpha.oil. This is very important, otherwise you would get an error message. And at the later stage in FV solutions, you would have to also change the entry here to alpha.oil. Let's leave it with water and this also have to correspond. So if you put here oil, then you also have to change water to oil. We don't do that, we have water, we use an we assume the water to be Newtonian, which is a very good idea. And here we set the kinematic viscosity of water to 10 to the power of minus 6 and the density to 1000. This is just a tutorial. You can be more accurate here if you want. And for air, we use also a Newtonian mo model. So we assume it to be constant, the viscosity to be constant, the kinematic viscosity 10 to the power of minus five, and the density is one. Again, here you can be more correct. I use one here. 
And sigma is the surface tension between water and air. So you should change this value if you're using a different kind of fluid. Control dict. And now we come to the entries in system. What do we find here? So most important entries here is maybe later or, or the, the following start from latest time. So if you run, for example, for five seconds and then you want to continue on until 10 seconds, for example, and you restart the simulation, then the simulation will start at five. If we type here start time and you already calculated up until five and then you change the end time to 10, then the simulation will restart from zero. Sometimes this makes sense, we will use here latest time. And now one of the most important entries in a simulation is the end time, until which point do you want to run the simulation? We will run it for five seconds. And this is what I mentioned, in five months you will come back, you want to rerun the simulation and you want to run it for example for a minute and you ask to yourself, uh, where do I have to set the velocity or the end time and then you go through exactly you have just have to remember sh setup case in the terminal enter you have all the files that you need opened up and then you go through oh uh, where did i have to enter the end time not here not here not here and then you come to the point of control dict and then you say yes this is exactly where I have to change it and then you change it without having to re-watch the video the tutorial without having to uh, go into the programmer's guide or um, have to google it you just go through the case files and you have all the most important informations in the case itself with the comments that I added to the cases and Again, you're very encouraged to add your own insight into the case files. We will still use five and then we have an initial time step size of five milliseconds. We use adjustable runtime and we will write out every 50 millisecond. So after 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15 and so on until five. Then two additional very important entries are runtime modifiable and just uh, time step yes, because with these entries, open foam will change your time step according to your flow. And for that, the Kuro condition has to be met. If you're not familiar with that, I talk about that in my other tutorials, the Kuro number theoretically should not be exceeded. The value should not exceed one. And sometimes you will use uh, smaller coronal numbers. But the point is that here you have um, and exactly this is not correct. This was not correct um, at an earlier stage. The, he, what do you see here? So if here, uh, the, the Kuro number cannot exceed the value of one. The dx is your mesh, the grid size. dt is your time step and your velocity is u. So with the, if the flow, the velocity increases, you cannot change the mesh. But what you, the only, th but you cannot exceed uh, one. So your delta t has to be decreased. And according to this condition, your delta t will be smaller or higher depending on your flow with these settings. And as I mentioned at an earlier stages, if you found this tutorial a couple of months ago um, for the preparation for the, the training session, then the delta t and delta x were mixed up. Sorry for that. But now this should this is the corona number condition. So with these entries, you should be good in for 90% of the simulations. FV schemes, here you set the discretization schemes for your, uh, for your simulations. We will not change this. Please go and check out my tutorial on discretization schemes if you're interested in that. These will work in most of the cases. 
Maybe you can use linear upfront instead of fun layer, but this is up to you. And then here you can set the tolerances. And as I mentioned, if you're using, for example, oil, this is where you change water to oil. But we will not change this here. Now set field state. And here now we set the initial water level. We, where we say that uh, the default value is zero and then we create a box from which is enveloping the entire geometry in the x and the y direction and it has a certain height in the z direction. So it starts at the inlet at minus 0 0.5 and it goes until 0 0.25. So we fill up the pipe until the center with liquid. This is our initial water level. Let me come back to here and then this is what uh, where we define a, a parallel simulation uh, for, for on four cores, for example, with a simple method. And we could run the simulation where we divide it up twice in the, in the x and twice in the y direction. So four domains, we divide it once in two domains in the x direction and twice in the y direction. So we calculate the cells uh, here on one processor, here on a second, here on a third, and here on a fourth CPU. Good, let's go back to here and now we come to foam.foam. And here now you have a lot of commands. So the commands that we need for the course mesh are these three commands. We copy the mesh from the mesh folder to the case. Then we execute set fields to set the initial water level. And then we enter interform to run the simulation. Okay, so what I will copy this and enter it here. And now we should have a poly mesh folder in constant. As you see, yes. Don't forget if uh, you created your geometry in millimeters, then this geometry would, for example, go from minus 500 till plus 500. And this is also a typical error. It also happens to me sometimes that then you calculate a geometry which is one kilometer big. Then you should reduce scale it to meters because OpenFOMO always runs in meters and SI units. And you can do that with the command transform points and then you can scale it 0 0.01, 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 with this command. We're not going to do that here because we created geometry in meters, but now we can execute set fields, enter. And if I now open up instead of the mesh, I open up the case, apply. And so this is our geometry. And if I open now up what's here, what seems to be the problem case? Ah, this is a new feature with 5.4. Skip zero. No, we do not want to skip zero. Can we now open? Yes, alpha.water. And if I rescale it, no, this is still a bug. So if, because they're in zero, we have a backup file. So if I try to move this out of zero and maybe reopen that foam.foam file without not skipping zero time. Let's see if this works now. Now, yes, now it works. So we have alpha of one here in the bottom and we have air everywhere else. So very good. Now we have our initial water level and we just have to enter interfoam into the, the bash on Ubuntu on Windows and we execute interfoam. 
And now the simulation runs until five. Let's wait until it runs, but what I want to show you at this point, I will stop the simulation, is exactly that. Execution time and clock time. And for whatever reason, I'm not uh, entirely sure about this, the execution time is very different from the clock time. And this happens if you just execute Interform in the bash on Ubuntu on Windows. So if you use the standard output. If I now delete this and go back to the uh, original setup, and if I pipe my output into a log file and I run it in the background, then the simulation will run faster. And you can just follow it with tail minus F. And hopefully this is not the difference is not that big. Okay, just let let it just run in the background and then do the first evaluation in this video and then I hope that I will have lunch. But in me in the meanwhile we have K star reconstructed. We are running it in, uh, on one processor. If I refresh it, let's see. Now you see, now we have time steps. I'm not sure why this does. So the first time step is supposed to be 0 0.05, why it says 0 0.18. This is why I don't like Paraview versions 5 and usually use 4.3. Let's just open it up again. With the zero time. Now I found now it looks better. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Skip zero time. Yes, please skip. Okay, I don't understand this new Paraview version, but as you see now something's happening. We could play it as a video and yes, we cannot see inside of the domain, which is problematic if you have a um, multi-phase flow what you can do you can put put slices through the center we do not want to triangulate them and we don't want to show them let's show them grid and alpha this is what alpha looks like and then we can also do a y normal plane here and alpha and now we see more this is what happens, it is injected and the gravity is pulling it down and then it is filling up the geometry. Let's take a look at the... Yeah, it finished. And there still was a difference between execution of clock time and uh, ex execution time and clock time. And this might also be because I'm recording and running Paraview. But uh, I found that with the piping uh, the output into a log file, this difference reduces. But uh, comment below if you find also this difference or um, without recording uh, your screen. But I think uh, what I found that the difference will be smaller if you pipe it into a log file. Okay, but now we have all the simulation results. Let's refresh and now we have 100. Um, time steps and now for whatever reason we all can, we can open up the zero uh, time okay and now we can take a look at the flow and this is what it looks like so it is in being injected and it is being pulled down by gravitation but as you see here we have the problem of numerical diffusion where we have regions of water with 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, something like that. And this is a very good question. What does this mean? And you cannot really interpret this value within the volume of fluid model. This is the drawback of the volume of fluid method. But once you find numerical diffusion, then 
the question is what is this and for this you see we really should refine the mesh and this we, what this we will do one point that i want to show you additionally what you can do to show the surface of the water is to use the clip possibility and then change it instead of plane to scalar and then we can clip it to alpha 0 0.5 for example apply and now we have if i click the them away then we have something like the surface of the water and we can make it maybe what blue blue like water although water is not blue <laughs> and this is what we find and you see the numerical diffusion but we have something like water flow flowing into our domain as you see that is a nice simulation and it finished within one or two minutes good so i think my lunch is finished at this point so i stop recording at this point and the, the, the video is also getting rather long so at this point i will stop recording and come back with the refined mesh in the next video i would like to thank you for watching and listening and i hope to see you in the next video. I hope to see you in the next video.